Hey guys, how's it going? Go see Richard today, and today we're going to be assembling the 100 inch high sense projector combo. This is for short throw. This is kind of neat. It's a very small projector screen, but I mean, if you've got the space and it's just going to be something maybe for your gaming or whatnot, this should be perfect. Anyways, let's go ahead by showing you how some of this stuff installs. First and foremost, this one right here. You'll notice that on these, unlike most projectors, if you install projector screens, that this one has ball bearings, so you have to kind of press them in to get them in. Let's see if I can get this in with one hand. I might have to put my foot right here. Let's see, just like that. And then you'll go to the far side, and you can pop that one in over there. So you'd come over here. Again, leg on here. It's kind of cool that they did that, that they've got these ball bearings that actually lock into here. But I haven't seen that before with most projector screens. And then what we'll actually do, switch things up, because this is another way you can do it. Come over here, slide that in there. Slide this one in here. Perfect. Now for these center ones. First thing you wanna do, again, this one, there's only one slot right here, it'll slide. And slide it till it clicks right there. Grab these little silver guys. These ones do not have the click. I'm getting, oh, they actually do have a click, see? It's very neat that they did that. It's a different, I haven't seen that before. Kind of locks them in. I'll give them kudos for it, they deserve it. Over here, again, ball bearing up, and locks in, and these ones ball bearings to the sides, which I don't think you can do it any other way. Perfect, and that's locked in. Now, these little guys, again, ball bearings, just like that. Oh things out. I gotta put my foot back on it. And I'm pretty sure you get the drift now. Just make sure the ball bearings are set upward. That's in. One last one. Perfect. Now that those are all in, let's slide these pieces into each other first. Pretty easy. Just so line it up right here. And just slide that in so the ball bearing clicks into here. These tinier screws put off to the side. These are gonna be for when we put the covers on. You can tell because these ones have just a little bit bigger screw thread on them. And again, just go ahead. You don't even have to put all the screws in right now. Just put one screw in on here. Don't really have to tighten that up. Just, and then put one more in down here so it ties into here. So again, as we can see, this needs to, there. Put the ball bearing back in place. Put one of the screws in down here. Tie this one a little tighter because that one's on a slide rail. From there, you should be able to pop up, slide it in. Now that we can see all four ball bearings, I would go ahead and put all your screws in. So put the four in right here. We should already have one in here. So put in the other three. Do the same up here. One, two, three, or whatever. This side, you don't even have to tie the screws in first, just slide it into place, make sure your ball bearings all line up, which they do. Come over here, do the exact same thing, and just be careful. The last thing you want to do is cut yourself with this metal. There we go, that one's in. All four ball bearings. Right there. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed I panned the camera away. Go ahead, slide the other side in, and put in all these screws just like you did with the middle ones. To 
keep a tight fit, squeeze this as you tighten those screws up and it'll keep these so there is no gap in between because as close as this can get is best. One, two, three, four, five, six in each corner. Everything's nice and tight. Take this pole, line it up on an angle so it's gonna slip in. You might have to use your foot and stretch this a little bit, but you'll be able to get this just like that. Make sure it screws up. So see those screws? You have to make sure it screws side up, line it up, and then now you're gonna grab that little baggie of the smaller screws and tie through here into those screw holes, and that'll hold your bracer in. After you finish this, put those screws in and flip the frame up against the wall. We need to lay down the plastic so we can get the screen started. Once you've lied this down, you'll see it has this material on there. Don't remove it, leave that material down. It's gonna protect your screen on top of the plastic. Next thing you wanna do is just take this tape off, which apparently is gonna be the hardest thing I do for you today on the camera. There we go. Now that you've done that, and you've gotta do this side, we want to get our corners done first. Bring this over. Use this hook tool right here. And you're going to stretch. I want to show you how to use this first. Pretty easy with these ones. Stretch it like that. And then hook this corner and then hook this corner. We want to try and keep this as center as possible on the hook. And you're going to go to each corner and do exactly that. Hook these on. So another one here. And again, make sure you get it on the metal rivet and it's going right through the metal rivet. You don't want to accidentally hook the plastic. Another th trick, when you're lying this frame down, always make sure the corners, if you're lying it down over here, the corners are not on this material. If you were over here and you, you put too much pressure on this corner, it could go through the screen, just a heads up. Again, they're gonna be under a little bit on both sides, but from here, I would actually go and start doing the second on each of these. From there, after you get the second on each corner, we're gonna do the centers next. As you can see, I'm not seeing any wrinkles here yet, which is great. And we've got the center. I have that center done, the two there, and the two there in the center. So the last thing I'm gonna quickly do before finishing them all up is I'm gonna hook this one and this one, and this one and this one. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side, do the same thing, and then work my way out from the center there. Inspect. Everything looks good. Do not touch the screen, but just flip this up just like so and take a look for any wrinkles in the corners. I don't see any wrinkles. I'm gonna go a little bit over and don't worry, it's all right to see a tiny bit of the corner. You don't wanna see much, but just a tiny bit because that'll get covered by the black frame. So after checking, I have no wrinkles. If you have any, it means that you need to start the wrinkle and smooth it out. So if it's down in the corner, move the spring over a little bit, move the spring over a little bit, and the spring over a little bit, and it should accordion that wrinkle out. All right, once we do that, it's time for these pieces. Pretty easy, lift up there, and then tuck this in so that lip goes on the other side of the screen. So you need this lip to hug the screen. But what you don't want to do is let it really rub too much against it as you slide it in. So like I said, lift the screen a tiny bit from this rail like this and tuck it in. You can see this is completely lined up with this edge right here. And look at that. We have little screw holes right here. So go ahead and put little screws in right here to hold that piece and then go on to the next and the next and the next. Leave these loose until the very end so you can kind of shift things around if needed. Once you do that, what you can do is make sure that's flat and in line, which mine is. Take this screw, or this shim, put it right here and put two screws in here, and it'll hold these two together so they don't droop over time. So you should have a shim for this side and that side, and then these are for the corners. And again, all you're doing is making sure your corners line up, then put these shims in to keep them nice and tight together. I'm super impressed with how this screen comes together. Everything from little ball bearing touches to the assembly of the screen. I didn't have to take this thing apart and readjust it like three times like some of the other short throw screens. 
It's really hard for me to do this, but Hyacinth's great job. I cannot believe how easy and how good this screen looks. Even though it's just a screen, like it assembles, everything's nice. It's got a nice finish to it. This is just blonde hair, cause I have blonde hair, but either way. Let's get the mounts ready to go and let's get this thing mounted up on the wall again. Thumbs up on the screen. All right, to mount it, you need this template. That is your center line, even says it is. So, what we need to find out is the height of your stand. This one that we're gonna be using is about 19 and a half, which is perfect. So now that we know that our stand is 19 and a half, this template has to be about 62 inches. The correct is 61.89. I'm gonna just do it at 62 because there is adjustment on those arms. So do it to 62 plus your stand height. That is the height of your template. So as you can see here, I have it marked out. That is my center point up there. And then that, if I were to take my stand, which is 19 and a half plus 62, I get about, we'll say 82 minus our half inch, so 61 and a half. That's about where that is right now. So again, if your stand's 24, make sure you can accommodate it. It's gonna be pretty close to the ceiling because it's another four inches up. It's lined up on there, I used a level and then I measured minorly off the ceiling. In the end, there is some adjustment. So even if you're off a minor bit, you're gonna be able to adjust it to level it out. Just get it as darn close as you can. And then from there, you can see where they recommend you mounting this. So what you should do is take your stud finder, go through and look at that. I don't, oh, I do have a piece of lumber right there. Perfect. So we got a stud right there, which I'll mark. And then over here, ta-da, we got a stud right there I can mark. Looks like I have a double stud there. So I'll definitely be doing a poke check, making sure we don't have any pipes. Anyways, if you look right here, you'll say this is your top screw hole. And then this is, I think this might be our bottom screw hole. Let me double check here. Yeah, as you can see, this is our bottom screw hole. So top screw hole, bottom screw hole. So once you have this marked out, which line is your stud, you would go up here, poke this with a screwdriver, then poke up here with a screwdriver, and then do the same again. Once you find that stud, right above your stud finder, poke on the black line, poke on the black line, and just make sure you're going straight into the middle of the stud. Here's a tip for you. I go through these screwdrivers quite a bit, but you bang on it like this until it goes in. And then what you do is you wiggle it, and if you give it a good whack with your palm, you should have some resistance when you pull it out, and that tells you that it got stuck in a piece of wood. Now, if it starts tinging, you're hitting metal, and if it feels squishy or moves, it could be a pipe that's loosely in there. So again, proceed with caution. You should literally hit the stud right as you go in. If you actually go into the wall and then hit something solid, it means that there's something on the other side of that wall. All right, pre-drill, throw in your eight millimeter bolt. From there, close enough. And again, I'm not gonna show you that one, but it's on there too. Next thing you could do if you wanted to is measure from the ceiling to here and then adjust it really quickly with these just so they're the same distance from the ceiling. Because in the end, if even if your ceiling is off, that's what you're gonna be aligning this to. Because if it looks off on the ceiling, it's gonna drive you nuts when you're sitting there. You might have to open them up a little bit with a screwdriver, but I wanna show you what you have to do. You have to get this to hook in right into that opening, but I've tried all four and it's a little bit tight. So I'm gonna just take a pair of pliers or a screwdriver, open it up and I'll close it once I get it around the inside there. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you're just gonna come over here and look at this, a screw in from this side, a screw in from that side. So that way it holds it from both angles. Do that on both of them and then put your key ring on the bottom. That's how you're gonna adjust them like blinds. How you open and close your blinds, that's exactly how you do it. So after you've gone ahead, that is up there. This is up here. Time to lift the screen on. Big, big thing. Do not touch the front of the screen. Pick it up by the edges and then slide it in on top of here, being careful not to rub the back end too hard against it. Because if you do, you could score the material. 
Well, there you go, it's nice and up there. But the next thing that you need to do is we have to make sure that we tighten that one up and it should bring that end up so we can level it. So again, you can use a big level or whatever and all you do is twist and it should raise. Just go ahead, confirm it against the ceiling. I know I'm three on both sides. In my case, yours is gonna be different depending. And then from there, you can unhook it and then tuck it in. What I would actually suggest doing is actually taping those wands against the wall or tucking them on, on the screen if it allow you. But I would rather tape it against the wall so that way it doesn't have a chance of pressing on the material. So like I said, unhook, tape those against the wall. And then from there, we're gonna probably be Velcroing the bottom to the wall. So make sure that you uh, have it nice and uh, level before you do that. Pretty easy, peel off this end, stick it to the inside of the metal right there so it's stuck, and then peel off this and stick that to the wall. So like I said, first stick it to, I would stick it to the metal on the back first, and then stick this side, peel the sticky off this, and then press it against the wall, and it'll stick it to the wall. But first and foremost, make sure you get them both lined up. After you Velcro it, man, that looks super good. Next thing we're gonna do is roll that stand up and uh, I'm gonna probably make sure it's level. It might be a little off. You could level it through the projector, but if you can at least make your stand or whatever you're putting it on a little bit more level, it'll make the overall tuning a lot easier in the end. So from here, what you wanna do is select front, Canada. For me, if you're in the United States, you would do that. I'm gonna skip that for now. Press menu key on the remote to start pairing. I'm guessing that's this one. Bluetooth remote connected, pairing successful. So again, your pairing key is this one. Continue. Quickly set up TV with your Android phone. We're gonna skip. I'm not gonna put this on the network yet. We can do that after. Perfect. Here we go. So next thing we need to do is start moving the projector back and forward until those lines line up there. So what you're gonna have to do from this point is, as you can see, I'm pretty darn close. I've got the border on there. So I can't do any more with the projector itself. So what I might actually end up doing is just raising the screen a tiny bit there and a tiny bit on this. Uh, by doing that, it'll bring it in here and bring it in here. And like I said, I'll just re-level it afterwards. But from there, I'm actually gonna just press next for right now and then continue with the process and see how it looks. After you've corrected and you have the light brought up to the right point there, everything's lined up here. Next thing we're gonna end up doing is, I'm gonna go up to settings. Now, I like to do everything manual. If you want to, you can do the auto with your phone. If you do this, take a look at that. So, if yours is off, which it probably will be, you don't wanna see any of the white with light. See how there's some light in the corner? Check this out. So, if I press down, and then over a little bit. We've got some more light there. Now we have to just even it out, see how that side, how it's on a slant now. You wanna to go to the far corner and we'll press back and then bring it over there and bring that corner in. So back, down so we can level it. And then, yep, and that looks square. Again, no light along the bottom, no light along the sides. We have a little bit in the corners. Again, you can adjust for that if you'd like, but what you wanna do is keep as much light as you can out of the corners and keep it all on the screen. So play with it a little bit and then press back so it saves. There you go, as you can see, it's all lined up now after doing the manual. And again, you just have to play with it by pressing back and doing all that other fun stuff. So now that we've got that set up, you can go ahead and start watching and see how it looks. There is a couple of these 
feet keepers right here. So if you have a solid stand, what you can do is go to your front feet on your projector and stick these on your stand so that way the projector cannot get bonked. Because if this thing gets bonked, then you get to recalibrate it. 